Ladies and gentlemen, happy Labor Day. Um, you know, I do not know how many of us know the history of the labor movement. As some workers in Australia, 167 years ago, demonstrated and they were agitating instead of working from sunrise to sunset, they'd be allowed. Uh, at least to work for eight hours and that challenge was taken up uh, um, across the seas in Chicago and uh, the their demonstrations were met with heavy police brutality <laughs> which are the opposite effect I think that sounds familiar uh, even so those who go to celebrate workers um, day must also know that these things over time have not come in easy. It took people's uh, uh, struggling to get to where we are. Until then, uh, in American society at that time, 167 years ago, the issue was between capital and labor. And of course, as an, an independent country, we then, um, in 1963, uh, decided to be part of the international labor movement and therefore we always celebrate uh, May Day as a matter of uh, of belief and uh, us in Azumio we, we believe this is very important, a very important day and therefore I want to take this opportunity to call on our leader the Honorable Raila Molo Dinga to come and, and make a statement um, so thank you for coming Maybe at the end of it, one or two questions. Thank you. So, members of the media, good afternoon. Uh, let me take over from where Steve has left it. Uh, today is a very important day internationally. It is the International Labor Day. The day for the workers all over the world. It's a day when workers commemorate the struggle that they have waged over the years to improve the working and living conditions of the people. And today is taking place against a background of serious distress among the workers of Kenya. But I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all our workers for their resilience and their endurance. And I just want to urge them to continue to unite because I think it was Karl Marx who once said that the workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. So um, one would have expected today that um, workers would have gotten something 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, nothing has happened to the workers, uh, basically because of uh, the lack of concern by those who at the moment have the responsibility to manage affairs of our country. We have a statement to make today, and this is on two subjects that we are addressing. This statement is on Shakahola massacre and protest rallies. We called you here today to make a brief statement on two issues. First, the Shakahola cult massacre, and secondly, the protest rallies planned for tomorrow. Yesterday, Honorable William Ruto announced plans to set up a judicial commission of inquiry to probe the Shakahola cult deaths. The regime also declared war on our protest activities planned for tomorrow, and they have repeated it today. Ruto's announcement on Shakahola underscores part of the problem we are facing as a country with the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. Ruto knows, Ruto does not seem to know that the concept of a judicial commission of inquiry appointed by a president is unconstitutional in Kenya since the year 2010. Under the 2010 constitution and its entrenchment of separation of powers, the exercise of judicial power is only as provided under Article 1 and Chapter 10, which provides as follows, and I quote, 1. The people have delegated their sovereignty of judicial power to only the judiciary and the independent tribunals established under the Constitution. Two, only Parliament can establish a subordinate court or an independent tribunal through an Act of Parliament. Three, only Parliament can determine the jurisdiction and functions of a court or independent tribunal. Four, it is also now the law as determined by our courts that only the Judicial Service Commission can determine who would be employed to serve in such a tribunal. Five, indeed, Section 13 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act is very clear that an inquiry shall be de deemed to be a judicial proceeding. This makes it an, an absolute preserve of the judiciary under our Constitution. A president, unlike the past, no longer has power to make any decision on the Constitution of a court or an independent tribunal, nor who sits in judgment in such a court or independent tribunal. Yet again, Mr. Ruto is trying to undermine and overthrow the Constitution. We wish to state as follows. One, in the matter of Shakahola and the growth of cult activities in the nation, Mr. Ruto is as much a suspect as is all the cult pastors of Shakahola and beyond. He owes the people of Kenya an explanation before he purports to be trying to solve the problem. Two, the so-called pastors are the people who set up the so-called sanctuary at Ruto's former official residence in Karen as the deputy president. They did not stop there. These so-called pastors proceeded to deliver prophecies and promise miracles 
about how Ruto would perform as a president. Three, these cultic pastors were among the people who supposedly sanctified State House when Ruto arrived there, pretending to be holier than, than every other Kenyan. They proceeded to pro prophesy how great his regime would be. Four, these so-called pastors have organized mega prayer rallies attended by so-called prayer warriors that include Mr. Ruto, Mr. Rigadi Gachagua, and their spouses, supposedly to sanctify the land. They ended up defiling the land. Five, these so-called pastors aided the introduction of mandatory fasting that started in 2015 at the DP's residence in Karen, and which have been carried over to State House, where everyone is compelled to fast every Wednesday, regardless of their faith, effectively making State House essentially a Shakahola annex. Six. Sometime in May 2022, Mr. Ruto's family claimed to have prayed for impure borehole water at their current residence and turned it into clean when a purification machine had failed. We see no difference between this claim and the outrageous ones made by cut pastors like performing fake miracles and extorting money from believers with the calls like Tumambegu ya miatatu kumi or fast until you meet Christ. Seven, the cult leaders are behind the decision by Ruto to establish a faith diplomacy office where he has gone ahead to provide a list of 100 members to be recruited into public service commission as intercessors supposedly to pray for counties and the government. Nobody knows the identity, the qualifications of the so-called intercessors, how they were identified and where they, they fit in a government where religion and state are separate entities. Eight, Ruto is the leader of the cult movement disguised as Christianity in Kenya. Ruto, Gachagua, and their families must tell Kenyans when and how they knew these cult leaders and what they knew about them. Nine, Ruto and Gachagua must tell Kenyans how much these so-called pastors contributed to their 2022 campaign. How many times have the so-called pastors accessed a state house since the start of this regime? Ten, as we stated at the start, Ruto must know he has no powers to appoint a judicial commission of inquiry, so that option is out. Eleven, we are all aware that judicial commissions of inquiry have been the tool of choice whenever the government has something to hide, like you believe Ruto does now. Twelve, Parliament must swing into action, come up with a select committee, and get to the roots of the cultic activities in the country and the abuse of religion for political gain. Thirteen, Parliament must help us establish whether the deaths at Shakahola were acts of rogue pastors, human sacrifices, or body organ trade 
and who the beneficiaries were. 14. The DCI may have swung into action late, but since they did, they have been doing a great job in Chakahola. They should be allowed to do their job without in their inter interference. 15. The current blanket restrictions placed on independent observers, including the media and civil society, must be lifted forthwith. 16. The state must give the media full access to the scene of crime and various aspects of the investigations. 17. Going forward, Ruto must commit to draw a clear line between religion and state in this country. He has deliberately merged the two to enable his political survival and as the cover-up for his corruption. 18. In Sh on Shakahola, Ruto is as guilty as those he is seeking to investigate. I repeat, he is as guilty as those he is seeking to investigate. The blood of those children who starved to death crying for a spoon of water is in Ruto's hands. On our planned protest rallies, we confirm that they are on tomorrow, beginning 6 a.m. on the 2nd of May, 2023. As we stated yesterday, the Constitution of Kenya, which in Article 37 provides that every person has the right peacefully and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions to public authorities. That has not been suspended. I repeat again, every person has the right peaceably and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions to public authorities. That provision has not been suspended. And our demonstrators tomorrow have been informed, and I repeat here, that tomorrow's demonstrations are going to be peaceful. Nobody should be allowed to carry any weapon. And nobody should try to interfere with anybody's private business. We are basically demonstrating to present our petitions to respective authorities. Police cannot decide in advance that there shall be violence, then proceed to ban political activities that are protected by the Constitution. That is the making of a dictatorship. It amounts to a suspension of the Constitution. We will resist. We will resist. As we said yesterday, we shall present a petition to the IEBC, the Office of the President, the National Treasury, and the Public Service Commission. We repeat that the only violence and destruction of property that have taken place during our activities are when the police invade our marches and when Gachagua's hired goons to invade the Kenyatta family farm and stole sheep and cut down trees. Mr. Gachagua and Mr. Kamau Echungwa are themselves turned charged with sending goons to go and invade a, a farm and also a business premises and no action has been taken by these police officers against them. It is instructive that to date nobody has been arrested over that invasion of the farm. Nobody has been arrested over the destruction of Spectre International Factory by goons hired 
but the same Gachagua. The state cannot purport to ban our activities on the grounds that it is protecting public property, while at the same time sponsoring the destruction of property in another corner of the city. So these demonstrations, as I've mentioned, are going to be peaceful demonstrations. Mr. Ruto, even today, has repeated that they are stand banned, that he's going to protect people's properties. We assure him there's going to be no destruction of people's properties. That is just an excuse. We assure Mr. Gachagua there will be no destruction of people's properties. Our people have been told to be peaceful. They're not even going to go to where people's places are. We're not going to markets. We're not going to shops. We say we are going to assemble at the Central Park in the city of Nairobi and march to the IBC headquarters and present a petition there. March to the office of the president along Uhuru Highway and, and present a, a, a petition and also go to the treasury buildings. There are no businesses along those streets. So therefore, nobody should come up with the excuse that they are going to protect people's properties tomorrow. They want to take this country to the dark days when people are not allowed to protest or to march. I invite them to see what is happening in France. Citizens have been demonstrating, buying tires on the streets in France, and they are protected by the police. They have been demonstrating in Europe, in, in, in Britain. They have been demonstrating in Israel. They have been demonstrating even in Japan. So we want to tell these people that Kenya fought very hard to bring this new constitution. We will ensure that the provisions of this constitution are protected. The civil rights of the people of Kenya must be respected by whoever is in regime, unless they want to impose a kind of a civilian dictatorship back on our people. Asante Nisan, end of the statement. My name is Emmanuel Toh from KTN News. Uh, just one question. Uh, your previous attempts to, uh, to access the CBD were successful. Okay. Let me... your voice. All right. My name is Emmanuel Toh from KTN News. Your previous attempts to access the CBD were unsuccessful. And tomorrow you've targeted at, at least four government installations. How, show, how are you going to do this this time around and how are you going to access? Thank you. Well, of course, we, we, we know where those institutions are. Last time, we were barred from entering CBD. We therefore were forced to actually go on the periphery of the towns. We will never chose to go to places like Madari, or to Kawangwari, or Kangemi, or Kibra, Mukuru Kwanjenga, Pipeline, and so on. But we were denied access to the CBD where we had applied to go and peacefully demonstrate and present our, uh, our petitions to the authorities concerned. Today they are actually trying to repeat the same thing. We said that Kenyans fought so hard to bring this constitution to life and that it is the responsibility of each and every Kenyan to defend provisions of this constitution. Yeah, what these people are saying today is, is allowed to hold water. No Kenyan will ever be able to, to do any demonstration. All demonstrations will be legal under the guise that you are going to be destroying people's properties, you are going to interfere with the businesses of people and so on. So they are trying to create a very, very dangerous precedence. And this must be resisted by all means.
you are leading this country who is held in high esteem. The president exercises authority from the people as it, it is happening at the moment. Just when will this uncertainty end? Because look, investments are dipping. The economic crisis in the country is one that Kenyans are unable at the moment to fathom. Investors can they can't have the heart to invest again in the country. And uh, it, it, it's, it's staining our reputation amongst the community of nations. Just when will the political establishment understand the need for sanity and stability for this country to progress? I guess you are addressing the question to the wrong person. <laughs> you are actually ad dealing with the victim. Uh, and uh, that question should be put squarely to Mr. Ruto and Mr. Gachagua. Because as you see, we ourselves are using the only tool available to us to um, talk to these people. We even offered to, to, to negotiate. We even appointed a team of negotiators. And you saw what they did, despite appointing one of our members as their representative. And they did that on purpose. They did not want to have any negotiations. We have said that we are very ready to engage constructively in, uh, in, 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 in negotiations, but they have not shown any good faith in to, to offering to negotiate. At the times, they have just been trying to buy time here and there, and that's why we are actually resorting to this. This is the only option that's available to us. But for your information also, and for the information of the media generally, we have received uh, very credible information that they are again planning tomorrow to go back to the Jubilee headquarters to invade Jubilee headquarters with goons uh, to try to, to take it over. On the one hand, Mr. Ruta has been saying that he wants to see a strong opposition. That's why they've been saying that they want to create a position of a leader of opposition in parliament. At the same time, he's trying to cannibalize opposition. It's moving out to buy out members of parliament from the opposition to, many, to, to reduce the strength of opposition in, in parliament. He's also trying to take over political parties in the opposition. Jubilee is a member of a Zemiya coalition. The signatory to the Zemiya coalition and their leadership is not in dispute. Those who try to c c carry out a coup in Jubilee were told by the courts that they should use internal mechanisms to resolve those uh, problems. And to, uh, in a, according to the information that we have, Jubilee has actually called NDC, National Delegates uh, Convention. Why don't they wait for that? Why they hurry to try to take over Jubilee by force? This basically shows you that people who are hell-bent and trying to return this country to a single-party dictatorship, which we came from those other days. So we are people who are defending the gains which have been made by the people of Kenya. We will not sit down and watch them try to do it. We will resist. And that's why we are here. Thank you. My name is Duncan Heimba from NTV. Um, two, quick, two quick questions. One, um, the, those in government are accusing Azimio, the chairman of Azimio Council, that's retired President Uhuru Kenyatta, and yourself and the team, as out to cause anarchy, and they read his involvement and your involvement long after you had uh, accepted and moved on in court and then all of a sudden, so they are saying this is a recipe for anarchy. And secondly, when you launched the MDD, uh, Movement for Defense for Democracy, your position was very clear that you no longer recognize uh, President William Ruto as president. Now you've said the petition tomorrow among the places will be is to deliver a petition to him. When did the position change that now you recognize him as president? Thank you. I did not say that I'm presenting a petition to Mr. Ruto. I said we are, we are presenting uh, a petition to office of the president, because that office exists objectively. 
is there. That's, that's why we are making a presentation there. Uh, and what we are saying there is that we are asking them to ensure that uh, the, uh, the, the, the constitution is respected, that they do not try to cannibalize political parties. You are also going to the Treasury and making a presentation that they should release funds to the county government. Because as you can see, they are trying to kill devolution by refusing to transfer funds to the county government. So operations in most of the, uh, almost all county governments have actually ground to a halt. They are just raising money through loans from banks to pay salaries to staff who are actually doing nothing at all. Then we say we are going to the IBC as an office to make a presentation to them. One, to agree that servers should be uh, uh, audited. We, 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 the, they should allow the auditing of the servers. Why are we all of a sudden you're saying we have changed our minds? Yes, as you know, the elections were done. The uh, ballot papers were counted. Then the results were announced. But you remember, that's where there was the controversy. When they announced the results, four out of seven members of that commission disagreed with the results which the chairman was announcing. The chairman and the two others were in minority. Majority of the members of that commission disagreed with the results which were announced. But we, however, let it go. But after that, months thereafter, three months later, new information came to light, which showed that, in fact, the information that was released by Mr. Chibukati did not represent the facts, that the four commissioners were right in disagreeing with Mr. Chibukati. And that's the reason why we are saying we need to have the servers uh, uh, audited. Why are we doing it? We are not only doing it because we want to take power, but we want to ensure that next time around Kenyans go to an election, there will be no monkey business. Because if this is not properly audited and concluded satisfactorily, Kenyans will not go to, to, to the polls. Why do you go to an election when results are announced arbitrarily by the chairman? And then we are also insisting that the four members of the commission need to be reinstated. Why? Because the only crime was because they disagreed with the chairman on, on the results. But if that is not corrected, it will mean that in the future, no member of a, of, of a, of a commission can disagree with the chairman because they will fear that they will be expelled uh, after, after, after the elections. So we are insisting that these people did not uh, uh, commit a crime. They were members of an independent commission, and they were performing their duties, which included agreeing or disagreeing with the results uh, announced by the chairman. So we are saying that these Kenyans should not be condemned to misery the rest of the, their lives. They, they committed no crime, and therefore they need to be reinstated. That we do not believe is an unreasonable demand. And then, we are talking about the cost of living of our people, which is so high and unbearable. You saw even today when the president asked them about the president of Unga, there was a, a loud disapproval of what he was trying to say. So he lives in another world. Kenyans live in a different world. He said that is also not an unreasonable demand. Uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, the issue of transferring funds to the devolved unit is also not an unreasonable demand. And the issue of stopping cannibalization of political parties, respecting political parties, respecting the verdict of the people at the polls, is very crucial to institutionalization of multi-party democracy in our country. So all the demands that we have made are clear and open, and we are ready to sit down with people and discuss over these issues. This is our position as a Thank you. Thank you.
food that is talking about here, 160, 170, all of it is GM. Yeah, all that thing. It's all GM. Can you imagine? No, 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 it's not GM. Vijana unataka nani? Wazee unataka nani? Kiwa mama unataka nani? 